Greetings to you all. This is a short, I hope, video of how to make a top bar hive, particularly the one we call Temple Hive. A top bar hive is usually shaped like this, comes straight along, straight along, like a trough. Of course, to construct it, we're going to build it upside down. But the first measurement we want to talk about is this end piece. Because we wish to build to the biodynamic principles and to honor our bees and deeply respect them, we choose our dimensions from the life of bees and the hexagon of the bees' wax that they form, the honeycomb. Therefore, the top dimension of this end piece is 21 inches. And this has been chosen simply because the girls who do all the work in the hive take 21 days to be born after the egg is laid that will produce them. It's an arbitrary number in some ways but it's a number of respect in our mind here. When you cut a regular 1 by 12 piece of wood that you could get from your local hardware store at 21 inches across and at an angle here of 60 degrees in other words on your chop saw which normally goes 90 degrees you move the blade to 30 degrees and chop at 30 degrees here 21 inches chop at 30 degrees here this will give you this trapezoid and the beauty of this is that this measurement is 21 this measurement is 13 and this measurement is 8. The numbers 8, 13 and 21 are numbers that are within and correspond to the Fibonacci scale which is the scale of beauty here on our planet and which describes the spiral that we see in the Nautilus shell, in our galaxy, in our sunflowers, and in our snails, in the way ferns uncurl. It's the sequencing of beauty here on Earth. So we bring that sequencing into the hive right away, honoring the girls with their 21 day life uh, um, gestation period. And then so happens that our 1 by 12s cut at 21 at 30 degrees, leaving a 60 degree angle here, will produce this trapezoid that corresponds to the Fibonacci scale. This temple hive tries and actually succeeds in some measure in using sacred geometry throughout in order to honor our honeybees and put them in a temple rather than a box. We've cut two pieces here, one for each end. I've got a piece of wood here that's also cut at the same angle so that I can push up against it and push up against it in order to construct the hive. I'm a very amateur carpenter. I actually probably don't know what I'm doing really but uh, this is what we've been up to. In order to get the slant at the sides here, you take the same one by 12, and this is 30 inches long. Now this number of 30 inches is pretty arbitrary actually, but if I go further, 36, we find that bees don't use the whole height. They seem to like this length. It's just a matter of uh, experience over a few years I've come to this dimension. 
So I've got the same one by 12. I've cut it to 30 inches long and I've beveled the edge again on the table saw this time at 30 inches so that it will be flat when I put it up against my end pieces. And this has all been pre-cut and pre-drilled so that I can show you. What you'll notice right away, of course, is that this wood isn't long enough. Oops, there we go. However, what happens if you cut down the sides is you lose the depth of the hive and of course you lose the Fibonacci scale. We don't want to do that. So we cut a secondary piece, what I call the extension. You just measure what's missing. I guess this one goes on the other side. I'll put it down here to prop things up a bit. There's the piece. And you simply extend the side to meet the edge here. I'm going to screw this together now, but not ask you to uh, wait for that. Well, I might show you something here. What we do, of course, we want to take this off, put it down. What I've done, actually, I should show you this, is I've pre-screwed the sides of both lengths, and I've screwed the hole for the screw, but then I've countersunk that for two reasons. One is the screw can go in deeper, which it needs to do, to hold it really tight. And the second is and it, that by countersinking, you don't split the pine. Pine splits very easily. And you don't split it by forcing the screw head into the pine. So you countersink and then pop it in there. I use a little bit of glue on my screw here, just a little bit here. And then I'm just going to pop this right in here. Now all of this has to be held tight together, of course, while you're actually um, drilling the holes. That's the tricky part. I've found myself making many mistakes here, and particularly the one of not making sure that the baseline here is actually even with the baseline here so that you don't have to finesse uh, the top later and make sure it's all even. But in the meantime, we're just going to screw this piece in. We're going to glue on the screw a little bit. And um, that was the sound of my dog who helps me figure everything out. I'm going to screw this together and show it to you next, pretty much screwed together.